On this episode of the History of the Course podcast with Curtis and Josh, we take a look at the supergroup known as Destroy Rebuild Until God Shows, or otherwise known as Drugs. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Is Survived by Pro for news and latest episode postings. And make sure to subscribe to the show, leave us a five star review, and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using. And if you'd like to see us do some live streams, leave us a comment or tweet us the keyword stream. Now, without further ado, let's start. The devil is in Atlanta, <laughs> army surrounded. I got nothing, Josh. I got no lyrics. Because they're pretty, uh, nothing worth your time. Nothing really worth my time. I mean, unless you really, uh, you really want to hear one, I'll give you one. If you really, if you really, 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 really want to hear one, I mean, if you just, sure, you just keep poking in front of me, Josh. I mean, all right, man, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you some lyrics here. Okay. All right. Here you go. Desperation before I hit the ground, reaching out for something. We've lost it all before, and we still want something more. We want it all. Can't make you shake the way that I do. Can't make you love the way that you're supposed to. And when you come crawling back, you'll see we can't change the past. For the first time, I see you who, who for who you really are. Ugh. Josh... If you had a sex life, a sex life, would you even worry about mine? If you had a sex life, like what? Garbage, man. Of course he would write about that because he's Craig Owens. Welcome back to the History of the Cores podcast, sponsored by the Church of the Seven Track, where each and every episode... We are taking a look at the band, at the history of a band from the core genre, even the fangirl or genre. I'm Curtis, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Josh. Party on, Josh. Party on, Curtis. What's uh, what's happening? What's going on uh, on the beach, beach side down there? Well, I'm on vacation. <laughs> well, it is the uh, the time of year we're on for vacation, vacation this summer. Where you at? Where you where you where you at this year, Josh? Um, what what I'm island? On, I'm on the tropical side of Dragonstone. Oh my god! One half is all sulfur and ember. <laughs> that's, that's on the other side. It's all smoky and we're disease on the nice side. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's beautiful man. over here. No ghost over here. Yeah, no ghost. Just uh, just great. Keep your dragons over there, and yep, uh, the dragons we'll, be, we'll have a good time. We're over here. <laughs> we're over here. Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. Hey, speaking of dragons, Josh, would you like a preview of season three, episode three of Throne of the Dragon podcast? Oh, I'd love to hear it. Well, here you go, Josh. Just for you. Nobody else. Just for you. Right here, right now. We're going off to war. I need a haircut. I need a haircut. <laughs> Why? I mean, I Don't guess know. it makes sense. I mean, that's what they would do to you, you like in eyes. any... Yeah, that's true. Like, and shave his head though. Keep your field of vision clear. Yeah, yeah, but he's got to he's got to stay think, fashionable. You think know? about it. If uh, he's got to ask <laughs> for uh, his lady's token from uh, <laughs> that she keeps under her. Uh, yes, um, I'll tell you that scene when she pulled it out of her boob. <laughs> All I could think of was the nightmare of my days of working retail. And this literally happened to me several times. Boob sweat money being handed to me. Uh, like, oh. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Oh my God. Why is it wet? <laughs> Use a pocket. Use a pocket. Exactly. 
Yeah, that's all I could think of was like, uh <laughs> the nightmares. <laughs> yeah, think about it. If he didn't get that haircut and hair being in his eyes, he's like, what? Is that a dragon? What is that? I can't. What is that? Is that a dragon? I just remember brushing my long flowing locks back to say, look, the dragon. (laughs) Well, there you go, Josh. Three episodes down. Five to get. Yeah, five to go. (laughs) I had to think about it for a second. (laughs) Five to go. Uh, The season is just flying by, man. Like a dragon. (gasps) Uh, before you know, <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? I'm a little, uh, <laughs> I thought you were watching the dragon fly by. No, nah, with the border, I don't think you'll be able uh, to tell, but well, ah! I say, yeah, no, <laughs> that's what I was like. Why well, you really uh, chill about it? You're just like, uh, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh gosh, uh, we love to have some fun, don't we? We just we love it. We love uh, yeah, I, I think you're good with the with the border. You'll cut it off. Um, you know what's not fun, Curtis? What's not fun? <laughs> this band. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say. Oh well, I mean, yeah, drugs. It's not fun. Drugs is not fun. Drugs are not uh, fun. They're not fun, man. We're talking about the band, right? <laughs> that's that's what we're talking about. Yes, right? just the band. Just the band, not the narcotics. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about that band. But hey, before we talk about that band, go and open up another tab. If you're watching this on YouTube, open up another tab. Go to YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using, and go find Throw the Dragon podcast episode season three. Ep- Season two, episode three. Good night, nurse. Uh, and go watch it all, listen to it all, whatever. All right, now, Josh, now we can do some drugs, okay? Now we can we can get this real party started now, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Uh, we're talking about the band known as Destroy, Rebuild, Until God Shows, otherwise known as Drugs. Mm-hmm. So edgy. Mm-hmm. I wonder who came up with that name. Craig Owens or Matt Good. It's a good bet. That's a good bet. Categorized in the genre of post hardcore. Um, do you have you ever listened to this band before, Josh? Uh, the first album I'd listened to a little bit when it first came out. Yeah, yeah, I, I can remember when it. When it came out, and I was kind of like, oh, "Okay, I'll check this out." I remember being very underwhelmed. Oh, you you getting kind of hyped for it? You're like, "Oh, okay, Matt, good." Craig yeah, Owens I mean, is? I just thought there might be a little bit more to this, but good lord, dude, Isles and Glaciers is better than this. This Ooh. just feels like mundane. Because at least if I'm listening to Isles and Glaciers, it's kind of like I'm listening to Chiodos, but. With drugs, it's like, this isn't like from first to last. This isn't really like Chiodos. But isn't that the purpose of a side side project? Yeah, and like with most side projects, it just kind of sucks. Like, (laughs) that's also the purpose of the side project. So get all your bad ideas out over there, away (laughs) from the band. Away from the good stuff. Do it over there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, you don't crap where you sleep, right, Josh? Yes, we'll be here. Or where you eat. Go over there. Yeah, <laughs> you go over there by that tree. Okay. Um, what does this sound yeah, like I to think... you? What does it sound like? Yeah, what does it sound like to you? Anything? Uh, I mean, it doesn't make me think of anything. Does it you? No. Oh, okay. I didn't know if this was one of those where it's like, tell me what it sounds like. Um, I mean, I don't really feel like it sounds i mean there's nothing that pops to my head when i think of it you know when i listen to it you know but i mean i think i good what how do you feel about this about the band yeah i'm underwhelmed like you are because i was just about to say i remember when 
they announced that they were a band or whatever, you kind of figure out, okay, who's in the band? And I was kind of like, okay, I kind of like that name. You know, it's unique. And then when it forms together, the acronym is kind of like, okay, it's kind of cool. But then you listen to it, you're kind of like, yeah, we kind of fell flat here. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Not my cup of tea. Not There's my cup of tea. not really buddy. any hooks here or anything. This is just uh, kind of a bland album. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think about the second one? Eh. I yeah, mean, it doesn't that, really I mean, feel like it takes on much of a different shape. Yeah, well, the see, the biggest thing I feel like is, yes, this is kind of a super group, um, but it really feels like this is just another project for Craig Owens. Right. You know, and so... We have all these people that I'm going to announce are all on the first album. Craig Owens is the only original guy that's still on there when the second album comes out. So okay. I, I feel like this is kind of going with what you're saying about like from first to second album. It didn't really feel like there's much change sound wise or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of goes towards like what I'm saying. Of This really feels like it's Craig Owens side project and then he's just like hey you get over here and be in my band because again he's not in chiotos anymore when this when he starts his band obviously isles and glaciers didn't work out um so right. he's just trying to figure out okay what do i want to do and i think at this point it's more of i'm a solo act and let me just get a band around me you know yeah so no i don't think you're i don't think you're wrong um, well, I, I know who, I'm not wrong. Who is the original lineup? Well, let me give you that original lineup, Josh, here. It was formed in 2009 uh, by, obviously, Craig Owens from Chiodos after he parted ways with the band. Mm -hmm. um, and it includes drummer Aaron Stern from Matchbook Romance. Okay. Guitarist Nick Martin, who was in Isles and Glaciers and will uh, soon after here join Sleeping with Sirens. Is that a cat behind you? What is that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, no. What is she doing? <laughs> is <No one>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. dang it. <laughs> you also have uh, Matt Good from, from First to Last. <laughs> And uh, Adam Russell from Story of the Year. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that uh, so, that was great. Story of the Year, Matchbook Romance from first to last. Chiodos. What was the other one? Uh, Isles and Glaciers slash Sleeping with Sirens. Okay, he was the one who eventually like went to play yes. with Sleeping with Sirens. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a interesting little group. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, Whereas, think, like, compared to the well, last band that we talked about with Isles and Glaciers, it feels like, okay, those kind of, yeah, they feel like they're kind of in the same pot here. Yeah. This seems a little more kind of stretched out. All over the place. I mean, Matt Good and um, what's his face from matchbook romance they would know each other they're on the same label for a long time right epitaph yeah um and then what was the other one again uh adam russell's story of the year story of the year yeah who's story of the year with during um that era kind of let's see that's a good question josh i am so glad that you asked that question Ever told you that you ask really good questions, Joss? Did they really have I put ever, out another album eleven ever, years later? Like who? Uh, oh, drugs. Drugs. Yeah. 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 He did. <laughs> uh, looks like they were on Epitaph at one point. Story of okay. the year. Um, let's see here, though, when that was. So the constant was 2010. That was Epitaph Records. 
So, and it looks like the album before that was Epitaph Records, The Black Swan. And then, yeah, they didn't put out another record until 2017, Wolves, and that was self-released. So, yeah, that, that would make sense then. That at least those three guys would know each other. Yeah. Uh, what was Chiodo's on? I wonder. That I do not Razor, know. Razor and Tie and Equal Vision. Okay. So that's a little more... A little different, but... Yeah. Yeah, kind of an interesting combination, like I said, compared to um, Isles and Glaciers. Um, being the last band that we talked about and, and where everybody came from and such. Uh, like I said, Craig Owens would uh, would start this project after uh, leaving or parting ways with uh, his original band, Chiodos. Um, and actually, he would perform in several different uh, side projects before he would start this band, including... Uh, like I said, Isles and Glaciers before, The Sound of Animals Fighting, and Cinematic Sunrise. Uh, we've already announced the lineup. Uh, quickly, the band would start to write material for a debut album that would come out early in the upcoming year, releasing their first single in November 2010 and playing their first live shows to sold-out crowds later in the month. The band would sign with Decadence Records, a company founded by Fallout Boy members Patrick Stump and Pete Wentz. Kind of an interesting fact there for you, Josh. While also getting distribution help from Warner Music Group owned company Sire Records. Uh, real quick, because I don't think I told you this before, Josh, but there's a band that we are going to be covering here. I think. It's not the next band. It's it maybe like two or three bands away that we're going to talk about. And it's actually a band started by Pete Wentz before joining Fallout Boy. Hmm. Interesting. Is yes. it? It's called Arma and Jealous. Oh, okay. You ever heard of them? No. Okay. Get ready for that one. Okay. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, just kind of a side thought there because uh, we brought up Follow Boy guys there. Gotcha. But anyway, on to the first album, Josh, the debut album, 2011's Drugs from Sire and Cadence Records, produced by Goldfinger frontman John Feldman. Hmm, another, another little interesting tidbit there for you, Josh. Uh, are you familiar with Goldfinger? Tony Hawk Pro Skater? Eh? Yes, yes. Eh, yeah. Debuted at number 29 on the Billboard 200 and eventually hit number one on the Billboard US Hard Rock list. Excuse me. Fun fact for you, Josh. The album contains two songs that are palindromes, which are spelled the same front and backwards. Are you familiar with the term? A palindrome? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. This all right. You kind of had to confuse look for a second there, so I just want to make sure. No, I'm. I was looking at number six on their 2022 supercalifragilistic XP ex, exponential crisis. Supercalifragilistic oh, yeah. exponential crisis. Woo! <laughs> it's gonna be a fun one for me to say. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, a uh, review of the album from SputnikMusic.com stated, "Quote." Reputation is an important thing in the music industry, whether it's people knowing your name and your accomplishments or all your mistakes. When you mess up in such a crazy industry, people know. The rumors begin, and next thing you know, you're on the wrong side of the fan base, becoming more of a disgrace than an idol. It's people like me who look at Craig Owens and such a with such a bizarre wonder, knowing whether or not to find respect for him for what he's done and what he's been through, or completely toss him to the side as another worthless member in society. Nice. After being harshly removed from Chiodos for many unexplained reasons, Craig is back with drugs, an acronym for <laughs> destroyer. <laughs> nice. This an summer, acronym. Craig Owens is on drugs. <laughs> drugs. Uh, an acronym for destroy, rebuild, until God shows. Containing members formerly of bands like Matchbook Romance from First to Last, Drugs is nowhere close to being a supergroup, 
rather a small combination of people from bands we've heard before. Compiling a small documentary about themselves before the release of their album, Craig and his group did everything they could to expose themselves to the public as quickly as possible, hopefully with a close to one. Following was the band, <laughs> following was the band releasing one song from the album every day up to the initial release. And with those songs, a little teaser video. With the band bringing so much attention to themselves, you'd think they'd put out something to look forward to. But that's not the story here. All right. I like this guy already. I do like their, this guy too, yeah. Their self-titled debut album is a compilation of seemingly angry moments from the life of Greg Owens' Dear Diary. Basically, that's kind of what makes me think of it, like a Dear Diary or something. Yeah. Most of the tracks seem to be aimed at a girl previously in his life as he sings about her having sex with other guys and doing everything else humanly possible. The one problem with most of the songs is that they all sound the same, yes, featuring similar choruses and structure. It's songs like Sex Life and I'm here to take to I'm here to take the sky that show the embarrassing side of the band. While others like Mr. Al ate my metal worm. And if you think this song is about you, show hope in what this band could do and should move towards in the future. The big performance here is, of course, from Craig Owens, as he does a great job vocally on a few levels. His screaming is just as good as his singing, and while his nasally style tone does nothing to allow him to stand out from other vocalists, he's still a great singer. It's really in the heavier tracks that show their true potential. In the second track, the only thing you talk about were given a catchy chorus that follows the opening chants and a few good breakdowns scattered throughout. It's also with these songs, we just see how poor of a lyricist Craig really is. Nice. We really like this guy. Yes, man. thank you, sir. In the song, or or lady, actually, because I didn't get a name on this one, because okay. it could be a guy or girl. Thank you, person. In, thank you, person. In the song, Mr. Al Ate My Metal Worm, the bridge line is, I'd like to keep cutting, but I can't let myself bleed. And literally, he says that for like 20 times over, which oh brings God. back memories to the old emo times, which were at best <laughs> laughable, <laughs> uncomfortable laugh. The song I'm Here to Take the Sky features an extremely catchy chorus, but is brought down by its extremely familiar pop punk style that surely separates itself from the other songs, but also shows the band's true lack of creativity. Many look forward to see what drugs could possibly pull off here, and I was one of them. Nice. So hey, this guy's just, or this person is just one of us, man. One of the main problems here is that it just comes out as whiny, and this band needs to seriously look back at this and think about what they could have done. Maybe if they weren't so focused on promotion and attention, they could have created a memorable album. But for the very few listen worthy tracks here, this isn't an album I'll find myself talking about anytime soon. Yes, thank you. We're, we're going to have to give it an award here real quick. This is probably the best review that we've ever agreed with. Like almost very, like spot very on, honest man. review. Very honest. I do like the part where he says, well, he, she says, Maybe if it, if they weren't so focused on promotion and attention, which to me that just screams Craig Owens all over. Look at me. I mean, I mean, who wears a look who at wears me, a I'm cardigan? Craig Owens, look at me. Who, who wears a cardigan without a shirt on? Come on, man. Craig Owens. Well, come on, come on, bro. Come on. Is that a cardigan or is that just one of those super? Uh, no, it's a cardigan. Oh, nope, look that's the, a cardigan. Look at the no button. shirt button. Yeah, button. Button. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Songs on this album include If You Think the Song is About You, it probably is. The Only Thing You Talk About, Graveyard Dancing, Mr. Al Ate My Metal Worm, Sex Life, Sex Life, Laminated E.T. Animal, I'm the Rehab, Ear the Drugs, I'm Here to Take the Sky, The Hangman, and the finale track, My Swagger Has a First Name. With uh, I don't even know if it's a track, but it's like some really weird, uncomfortable, hidden ending entitled Untitled. Did you remember hearing that part? 
go you need to go listen to her quick it's at the very end of my swagger has a first name it's like ugh, makes me want to puke cut my ears off uh bonus tracks include a little kiss and tell ghost town live the holly situation rehab and rifle rounds scream that's actually kind of a cool name rehab and rifle rounds scream if you're crazy graveyard dancing acoustic and never odd or even yeah he's 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 getting a taste he's getting a taste right now man it's not good it's just like a speaking part but just like ugh. Mm hmm. Yep. Very strange. Yeah. Craig, Owens, Craig Owens is like, please talk about me more. So weird. Yeah, it's dumb. That's um, like um, that. Oh man, what's uh, what Memphis Mayfire song is that? Oh boy. Oh, then I'll get it, it was like, in two seconds. Uh, I don't know of a... Of course, my history of the Memphis Mayfire discography, I think, stops with... Uh, let's see. We're about to find out. Uh, mine stops with The Hollow in 2011. And I really wasn't even much of a fan of that album. The only album that I really <laughs> like from, uh, from... Memphis Mayfire at all is Sleepwalking 2009. Now that was some good stuff. And then they went and just I'm not sure at what point in the song it is. I thought it was at the beginning, but it's like a phone call. Oh no, it's that uh, um, it's the one they did with um, who Memphis Mayfire? Helen Quinn. Oh boy! But who did the song Memphis Mayfire with Helen Quinn? Well, now I'm thinking that it was maybe Sleeping with Sirens. Well, he's in Sleeping with Sirens. Well, Helen Quinn, yeah, but yeah, that's. I'm saying now I'm thinking it was maybe a sleeping with silent song that featured um whatever his name is, Maddie or whatever. Maddie Williams. Maddie? Maddie Williams. Well, um Yeah. It's the one that like has a like an answering machine message. And it's like, oh, we're sorry. Maddie can't come to the phone right now. He's probably busy uh, oh. with his supermodel wife or writing a new album. Yeah, something like that. Just yeah, like, oh I think God. I know Could this dude about. suck himself off anymore? <laughs> oh, man. I don't remember. But yeah, it made me think of that. It's just like, I'll dude, what? we get it, bro. You're really, really into yourself. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, or it was a couple of episodes ago, and I think it was Maddie Williams and somebody else. And you said, I don't remember what you said something about jerking each other off or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, no, you're good. No, you're good. Hey man, oh, you're, you're so good, good though. Oh, yeah. You're so good, bro. Yeah. But anyway, back to this album, debut album, Josh. Um, like I said, we both we both were kind of intrigued when this band was announced. Uh, seems the reviewer was too, and all three of us can agree that what we were ended up presented with uh, was not what we were expecting, and it kind of fell flat on its face. Can we agree with that? Yeah, it's it's not like a horrible album, but it just doesn't no. do anything. Yeah, it's just kind of like, oh. There's like zero hooks. It just exists. It's like in a generic kind of arena core album. Ooh, arena core before arena core was a thing. Yeah. Party girl arena core. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, the God, the deal where it says um, their self self-titled debut is a album is a compilation of seemingly angry moments from the life of Craig Owens. Most of the tracks seem to be air aimed at a girl previously in his life as he sings about Shocker. having to, her sing. Yeah. It's like, like I said, 
this just sounds like it's just like a dear diary, man. How did she hurt you today? Or supposedly hurt you or whatever. It's like, get over it, dude. Move on. You know, there's other there's other things in life. It's like quit harping on the past, quit harping on things that hurt you or whatever. Quit being butthurt about stuff and move on, bro. Right. But that's how he gets the girl. He's like, I'm so emotionally damaged. Ugh, my cardigan. <laughs> it's damaged. Yeah. It's damaged. <laughs> it's damaged. <laughs> oh man. My cardigan heart. The cardigan wrapped around my heart. Following the release of their debut album, the band would headline a short tour across the UK, following that up by co-headlining the alternative press tour with Black Veil Brides, uh, along with Versa Emerge, Conditions, and I See Stars. That Boom. summer also... Huh? <laughs> Gross! Oh, all of those, What a yeah. disgusting lineup. <laughs> oh, man. My that God. summer also saw the band join the Vans Warp Tour. Shocking. During their stint on Van Warp Tour, the Especially band knowing would... what we know now. Well, yeah, there, there's that too. Uh, the band would release a live EP entitled Live at Hot Topic, playing songs from their debut album, you guessed it, Live at Hot Topic. That fall would see the band play Australia on the Counter Revolution Tour, following that up with the World War III Tour with Asking Alexandria and Hollywood Undead. Just before, oh, he does Hollywood like Undead that. gets a pass. Hollywood Undead gets a pass, but really, what was the other one? You, yeah, what was the other one you said? Asking Alexandria. Oh yeah, that's why that's does unforgivable. Why does Hollywood Undead get a pass? Because they've been around forever, and they're oh, okay. more goofy than anything. Okay, yeah. Uh, just before the one-year anniversary of their debut release, the band would announce via social media that bassist Adam Russell had left the band, stating, quote, It is with bittersweet sentiment that we announce some news today. <laughs> Our bass player, Adam Russell, has made the personal decision to move on from drugs, to pursue other opportunities, more drugs. What? No, that's not what he said. Different, uh, well, <laughs> different drugs. While we are happy to see him make a choice that will ultimately be best for him, of course, we are high, Liz. We are sad to see him go. Please know that we remain close friends and supporters of Adam and that there are no hard feelings. Rest assured, they, this will not affect our current tour schedule. Our close friend, Ty, never wrong, always right, will be filling in on base duties on the upcoming Sin tour. Uh, wheels are starting to fall off. Nice. What would follow was a short headlining tour along with a few DIY shows. Three months after the departure of drugs bassist Adam Russell, Owen's former band, Chiodos, would release a video update that hinted at the former vocalist's return. Uh-oh. The following day, Josh saw members Matt Good, Nick Martin, and Aaron Stern uh, announce their departure from the band with the following statement, quote, to our loyal fans and friends, after much thought and consideration, we, Matt Good, Nick Martin, and Aaron Stern, have decided to announce that we will be moving on from drugs. This decision has not been easy to make, and we want to express how grateful we are for all of you who have supported us and made this the incredible experience it has been over the past couple of years. We'll always look back on our times in this band with pride and have no regrets about the music we've made or the people we've made it with. We want to thank everyone who has believed in us, and we hope you'll keep believing in us. We look forward to the future, and we know we'll be seeing you again soon, no matter where our paths lead next. With love and gratitude, Matt, Nick, and Aaron. Now, the thing about this time, too, is when From First to Last is getting back together. But I've, I've always kind of felt like reading this and just kind of like... Knowing Craig Owens is kind of it makes me wonder if they're kind of like, all right, we we can't deal with this guy anymore. We got to get out of this. We've well, made yeah, a terrible mistake. If it was <laughs> supposed to be if he told them that he was going back to Chiodos and that he was done, or if they also 
saw the release and were like, oh, okay, we're getting out of here before he dips. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing too, because then it could be a thing where sometimes I've seen bands like break up and say, we don't want, uh, you know, us certain guys don't want to do it anymore. You know, if so-and-so still wants to do the band that he can, it's his thing. It's his problem now, whatever. And so I kind of right. wonder going back to the deal of like what I said at the beginning episode of, I always feel like this is Craig Owens band. And all these other guys are just kind of backup guys, you know. Hey, it's my backup Passing band. through. Yeah. And so it's almost kind of like a deal where, well, if he's going to go back to Chiodos, and it's like, what purpose do we have here? We're just kind of like, we're just here. This is more his thing, you know. He's getting yeah. all the girls. We're just chilling over here. What the heck, you know. Yeah. We tried wearing the cardigans too. It didn't work. There's no magical powers in the cardigan. All just but, up there matching cardigans. Yeah. Woof. Woof. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, the trio plus former bassist Adam Russell would announce in August of that same year that they would be reuniting to write music under a new name separate from drugs. See, I think that that kind of okay. lends more to well, it. Yeah, than, that, yeah. Yeah. So she's addressing the drummer now. Uh, no, oh, no nobody's just left. Nobody. Yeah, it's just okay. him. Yeah. I mean, if, if he's even in that, because again, he's going right. back to Chiodos. Uh, addressing the confusion from the recent news, Matt Good would put out a statement saying, quote, people have to clear some things up. No one is in drugs anymore except Craig. If he wants to keep it going, then that's his thing. See? Okay. Well, I win. Yeah. In the end, nothing would come from this new project as Maggie would return to from first to last full time. And we all know how that went. Uh, not saying it was terrible, but you know, you got another album out of it. Well, it was just um, like, who cared at that point? Yeah. Like That's, it was over. That, that yeah. era and was I, over. I think I said it in that episode, but that's one of the bands that I always think of first and foremost when I talk about the history books of bands at certain points you've contributed you've contributed now move on i feel like from first to last those first two albums should have been it and maybe really not so much heroin because i wasn't even a big fan of heroin album uh <laughs> but, uh tried it hate it maybe feel bad no uh <laughs> but i feel like especially like dear diary was just such a big thing on the scene you know at that time when it came out that it was an iconic album yeah, it was an iconic album. So it felt like you could just like do that and just like leave it and just like move on. You wouldn't have any problems. But I don't know. You get to, you know, self titled and then, you know, Thrones with Wolves. And you start going downhill. Of course, you lose um, Sonny Moore. And then when he comes back, it's like, Ugh. and then, you know, he's gone again. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, being the lone member left with a possible return to his former band on the horizon, frontman Craig Owens would decide to lead, leave drugs as well, uh, which I thought was kind of funny because it's like he's the last one to left. And he's like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm leaving, too. Yeah. See ya. Um, <laughs> save face, basically. Um, later, he would confirm his return to his original band, Chiodos. Now, Josh, you would think that this would be the end of this, quote, super group. But you were wrong. Dead wrong. Fast forward to the year 2020, just before the COVID-19 pandemic, founding member Craig Owens would restart the band, releasing a demo of a new single entitled King I Am, of course. But like we've talked over and over and over and over and over and over and over about COVID-19, putting plans of a return for the band on hold for the time being. A year after the revival of the band, Owens would announce plans for a future album release along with signing to Velocity Records. To help record the new album, Owens would record recruits former bring me the horizon guitarist joan weinhoffen former all that remains bassist aaron patrick and former rings of saturn drummer aaron stachacher stitch stitch 
we're going to call him Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now with that group of uh, former bands, Josh, does it seem like it's even further apart than the original lineup? Yeah, that's a pretty obscure group. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Um, but I almost feel like that's like that kind of lends more to the side project thing, regardless again of like how it turns out. I would almost feel like I would want to like hear or not here, but like I would I would like to see something like that where it's like you're coming from different areas, you know? Right. But, but this also just feels like him grasping at anything because Shiotos is over by this point and he's only right. doing like solo stuff. And then now what? it's like, okay, should I try to well you gotta get, get money for the drugs? Destroy rebuild like going again. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. The first new single off their upcoming album would be released in February 2022 with their first full, no, with the full album release slated for that upcoming summer. 2002's Destroy Rebuild from Velocity and Equal Vision Records. Gary Cassidy of punktastic.com wrote in his review of the album stating, quote, more than 10 years on since debut album Drugs took the world by storm. And well, a lot has changed in the world. The failure to follow up on their debut outing always felt like a huge, huge missed opportunity. So the biggest question surrounding their long anticipated second release is, has it been too long? Has the passing of over a decade decayed the monument of Destroy, Rebuild, Until God Shows? Well, Craig Owens has finally returned with the aptly named Destroy, Rebuild, which is exactly what he's done with the band. Now, considering, no, now consisting of himself, Jonah Weinhoffen, formerly I Killed the Prom Queen and Bring Me the Horizon, Aaron Patrick, formerly All That Remains, and Aaron from Rings of Saturn, it would be understandable to wonder if drugs are anywhere near similar to the same band as that which gave us the exciting debut featuring hit singles if you think this song is about you it probably is and sex life but that question evaporates really rather quickly as destroy rebuild reaches a boiling point in an instant even 30 seconds in there's no doubt where the roots are laid for destroy rebuild as owens in a mutual in inimitable vocals teleport us right back to the debut with hints of Mr. Al ate my metal worm as destiny provides everything you'd expect from destroy rebuild until God shows. And that nostalgia is eclipsed by satellites in motion, which wouldn't have sounded out of place on the da band's debut, nor would brighter side. Are we not drawn onward to new era Gravity, My Ever Ghost, Waiting on You, or The Arm, which collectively inject everything we've missed from drugs over the past 10 years. Destroy Rebuild isn't just a throwaway dose of nostalgia, though, with plenty of exploration clear for all to see with electro balladic gold, which oddly almost gives off Rasmus vibes at a few points as the band veered down the pop route while not losing what endeared us all to them in the first place. In fact, if given the appropriate platform, Gold has all the makings of a hit single that could even eclipse the band's previous work, while What's the Code for Heaven's Gate follows a similar vein and sounds almost placebo-esque in parts. Outcasts versus Everyone, though, may just be the most unconventional song on the album as Owens teams up with Brennan Savage on vocals for the powerful, almost new metal sounding track that's likely to be the most polarizing on the album purely due to how much of a departure it is from the rest of the release. That said, alongside Gold and the incredible, honest, and authentic La Rong The Longest Road, the band embracing a more contemporary, melodic style and integrating it with the high-tempo, aggressive energy we've come to expect adds a refreshing balance to the album. <sighs> And gives us the slightest Good Lord, hint. This, yeah. this article is ridiculous. <laughs> this article is just jerking off every song, dude. And they're <sighs> all just like, meh. Yeah. 
Can I finish? God damn. <laughs> Would yeah. you like to hear more? <laughs> Would no. you like to know more? <laughs> Good. And gives us the slightest hint that there may not be a be such a long way between now and a potential third release, as this feels equally as much of a new chapter opening as it does some sort of closure. All right, Josh, songs in this album include Destiny, Satellites in Motion, Gold, Brighter Side, Outcast, versus Everyone, featuring Brendan Savage, Supercalifragilistic Existential Crisis. The Longest Road, Are We Not Drawn Onward to New Era? What's the Code for Heaven's Gate? Gravity, My Ever Ghost, Waiting on You and My Battery is Low, and The Arm, the finale song. Uh, talk for a second, Josh, about this album while I switch headphones. Dude, it's not, again, it's like the first album. It's just kind of like, eh, okay, it exists, but what Cash am grab. i well, yeah what am i supposed to do with this and it's clear it's another one of those albums that like yeah the numbers betray it because it starts off high on the first two songs and then starts dropping by the third and then just a couple after that we're already at like 20 percent of the listens you know oh you're talking about listen yeah okay yeah so it's just not I don't know. I don't think this is. I think what he was saying in the beginning about like, was it too late? You know, are mm-hmm. people just not going to care? Yeah, I think no. people just weren't going to care because, yeah. especially, you know, this one came out two years ago. Like this, we've moved so far past, like this little. Well, the the problem is, it, it'd be one thing if the original album or the first album was, you know, some big hit, you know, and you left people just one more and they're in a frenzy or whatever, but you didn't even do that, you know? And so now you're coming back all these years later. It's like, are you expecting for people to be like freaking out? Oh my God, they're back. Oh, this is such a good album. Cause I mean, it's, that's just not going to happen. You have no foundation to stand on. (laughs) There's nothing about this that really draws me in. Yeah. I'm with Especially you. Especially with him. It's like, okay, well, what's going to happen? Is he going to get a call that Chiodos is going to put out a new album? You know, he's just moving well, from Josh, one thing to the next. I'm glad you brought that up because Chiodos is back. Ugh. <laughs> oh, man. And he is back in the band again. I appreciate sure. him over all these cash. Grabs. Well, I, let me take that back. They uh, they did a reunion. That's what it was. The all's well that ends well reunion back in. Was it the beginning of this year or no, they're going to play. Uh, they're going to play when we were young festival in Las Vegas this year. Under the Chiodos name. Nice. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. For no, no, participate. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, this is how bad it is getting. This is what it says on Chiodos', Chiodos uh, wiki page. Uh, All's Well That Ends Well Reunion 2024. It was confirmed on November 13, 2023 that Craig Owens would play at the When We Were Young Festival in Las Vegas on October 19, 2024, under the Chiodos name. Okay, again, he's doing it. It's him. Nobody else. Some randos. The band lineup has not been formally announced, but Pat McManaman, nice, confirmed that no other members were asked to participate Craig Owens will also play under the Chiodos name for the Emos Not Dead Cruise in February of 2025. So basically, it, yeah. he is the king of all cash grabs. Yeah, this is just cash grab. Uh, we we got it. We know what we're getting with this guy. Stamped. Stamped. It is a cash grab. Yeah, he's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this. 
I don't have anything else to say about this album. They're they're just mundane. There's nothing nah, to really talk I about. about. I meant about the rest of this 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 whole band because they've got nothing there, else. I was about to say there is nothing else. Yeah, I about to say I just basically told you what the future was. Because uh, he's going to be I'm, performing as Chiodos, but just by himself. Yeah, which I don't know, man. I feel like he's just living off the side pro the side project life now. I'm just going to go wherever. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna live off my old band. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some money here and there. Maybe do some drugs with it. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Fangirl core. Thank God this chapter of the history of the cores is done. Uh, anything else to say, Josh, about the dr- the uh, band drugs? No, don't recommend. <laughs> I highly do not recommend. Uh, one thumbs down, two thumbs down, or two thumbs down with the fart noise. Uh, two thumbs down with the fart noise. Oh, can I? I was hoping I could hear it. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. Well, I couldn't even hear it anyway. Won't pick it up for some reason. That's a shame. Mm. Oh, what about me? Nope. I guess not. Oh, that's we're being censored. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at is survived by pro for news and the latest episode postings, not just on this show, but our other shows as well. We have the history of the cores after hours podcast where I sit down with my good friend and avid listener of this very podcast right here, Eric. And we talk about some of the bands me and Josh have already discussed getting a listener's point of view. We also have the a rabid yeah, he said a rabid listener. He's like, oh. I said, ah. <laughs> he's foaming at the mouth. <laughs> uh, an avid listener, a rabid, avid listener. We also have the Red Right Hand podcast, which has covered all six seasons and soon to be a movie about the Peaky Blinders. We also have the Throne of the Dragon podcast, which is going strong right now, man. We've done season one. We're currently in season two of HBO's House of the Dragon. And in the off season, we cover George R.R. R. Martin's works. Apparently, we're talking about Fire and Blood. C.S.R.R. Tolkien? Yes. Yes. Also, while you're on Twitter, make sure to follow my co-host at Joshua Lynn Gary. Uh, the more follows he gets, the more vacations he can take to the uh, nice side of Dragonstone. Make sure to leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on whatever podcast. Oh, God. Here comes Dragon. (laughs) Whatever podcast service you're using. If you want to listen to us and see our smiling faces, head on over to our YouTube page. Just search Is Survived By Productions. That'll have every episode from all of our shows. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Alrighty, Josh, until the next episode where we are heading back up north, uh, not for an invasion, Josh, but for a raiding party. It's it's another raiding party. We, we got to attack them slowly here and there when they're okay. not expecting it, okay? But we're heading back up north uh, to the great wide north to talk about a little band known as The End. Until then, we'll see you.